This is Ibo Area TV. The five majors. One enduring might is that Nigeria's first military coup was carried out by five Ibo majors. The source of the might is the We Were Five in Number comment, which the coup's most visible participant, Major Chukuma Kaduna Nzogu, made in an interview with Dennis Ejindo. Africa and the World, May 1967, after the coup. The Five Majors Might was later perpetuated by Captain Ben Bullier's book on the coup entitled Nigerians Five Majors, the title of which he admitted borrowing from a BBC play of the same name. When Nzogu made his infamous We Were Five in Number comment, he made no reference to the rank of the five. He was merely referring to the five designated strategic regional commanders of the coup. In fact, no less than nine majors were originally billed to take part in the coup. These nine were majors Nzogu, Ifajuna, Ademoyega, Okafo, Anufuru, Chukuka, Obienu, Anwatwegu, and should Soke. Shortly before the coup, should Soke was posted overseas. On the coup day itself, Obienu failed to show, leaving seven majors as participants. When it came to execution, the majors designated five officers as regional commanders for the coup's execution. Of Nzogu's five, there were two of us in the knot. Nzogu and Major Team Onwatwebu, and three more in the south. The head of the Lagos operations was Major Emmanuel Ifajuna. That makes three majors so far. The squad which killed Chief Samuel Akintola in Ibadan was led by Captain Mwobosi. That makes four, three majors and one captain. There was no coup in the Midwest as no military information was based in that region. However, Lieutenant Oguchi was dispatched to the east to arrest the Premier of Eastern Region, Dr. Michael Obara. The identity of the fifth member is the most problematic. Majors Don Okafo and Adewale Ademoyega were given much responsibility for the Lagos branch of the coup and it's likely that one of these two men was the fifth commander. Who was the leader? Major Nzogu has since 1966 been touted as the leader of the January 1966 coup. This has been widely presumed due to the visible role which Nzogu played during and after the coup. Nzogu was the only major to successfully execute the coup in his designated target region. He then followed up his coup successes with his infamous speech, Our enemies are the... Thus, the first assumption that he was the coup leader spread. The truth may be somewhat different. It was not until the coup plot reached its logical stage that Nzogu was brought in to the conspiratorial group. The brains behind the coup was probably Major Emmanuel Ifajuna. However, Ifajuna was chased out of Nigeria's then capital city of Lagos by Major General Irunsi, realizing that Irunsi was rounding up those that took part in the coup. Ifajuna fled to Ghana, leaving Nzogu to hold the fort. The Execution and Plot of the Coup In August 1965, a group of officers, one Yoruba and four Igbo majors, began plotting a coup d'etat against incumbent Prime Minister Abubakar Balawa. The coup was planned because, according to the majors, the men at the helm of affairs were running Nigeria aground with their corrupt ways. Ministers under them were living flamboyant lifestyles and looting public funds at the expense of ordinary citizens. 
The president of Nigeria, Namdi Azikiwe, left the country in late 1965, first for Europe, then on a cruise to the Caribbean. Under the law, Senate President Mwafo Orizu became the acting president during his absence and has all the powers of the president. In the weeks leading up to January 15th, Nzogu carried out reconnaissance on the official lodge of the Northern Region Premier, the Sadwana of Sukutu Amadu Bello. Nzogu often took his men on a nighttime training exercise known as Exercise Damisa. The men were unaware that the military exercise that they were participating in was actually a practice run for a military coup to overthrow the government. The commander of the 2nd Brigade in Kaduna, Brigadier Ademulegum, became aware of and was irritated by the night time training when he became aware that soldiers had been going near the Premier's Lodge. He reprimanded Nzogu in a telephone call and warned him to keep his military exercises a safe distance away from the Premier's Lodge. Although Ademulegun complained about the commotion, he took no further action as he was unaware of the exercise's real purpose. Ademulegun was a Polish soldier that had been Major General Irons' rival for the job of GOC. His control over his troops was such that a few soldiers from his brigade participated in the coup. Thus, Nzogu had to conscript young soldiers from the Nigerian Army Training College to carry out the coup in Kaduna. In the early hours of January 15, 1966, Nzogu decided to turn Exercise Damisa into a full-blown military coup. Nzogu led a group of soldiers into a bush adjacent to the Premier's Lodge. Once there, Nzogu informed the men of their real mission. They were to attack the Premier's Lodge. Nzogu and his men blew open the gates to the Sadwana's Lodge and Nzogu personally conducted a search of the residents, hunting for Bello. After losing his temper at his initial failure to locate him, Nzogu found Bello hiding with his wives. Bello was shot by Nzogu. Bello's faithful bodyguard who came to defend him with a blow and arrows was also shot as well as one of his wives who tried to shield him from her body. Nzogu was fiercely committed to the coup and was the only one of the coupies able to execute his mission. His personal assertion that it is impossible to vote out a Nigerian minister showed his own conviction in his actions. Brigadier Ademo Legun Nzogu's co-conspirator in Kaduna, Major Tim Onwatewu, personally led a detachment of soldiers to Brigadier Ademo Legun's house. Onwatewu made his way up to the Brigadier's bedroom where he was laying beside his wife. Upon seeing Onwatwegu enter the room, Ademulegun shouted at him, Timothy, what the devil do you think you are doing? See Bullies, um, Nigeria's five majors. Onwatwegu told Ademulegu that he was under arrest. According to the major's version of events, Ademulegun reached for a drawer beside his bed, and as he did so, Onwatwegu shot him dead in his bed along with Ademulegun's wife who was lying beside him. Colonel Shodoinde The head of the NMTC, Colonel Ralph Shodoinde, was also killed. The manner of his dead is unclear. His wife, who was present when he was killed, testified that he was shot by several soldiers including Majors Nzogu and Onwatwebu. Other accounts claim that a grenade was tossed at him. It is not clear whether Nzogu could possibly have been involved in Shodain's death 
since presumably he was preoccupied at that time with killing Amadou Bello. Most accounts place responsibly for shooting this murder with Onwatwebu. The major's blood loss in some cases and failure to kill others is puzzling. The same major Onwatwebu who shot his commanding officer and their wives arrested but did not harm the governor of northern region, Sir Kashim Ibrahim. When released, Ibrahim vouched that he had been treated with utmost respect by the men who abducted him. The majors clearly had their favorites when it comes to sparing or ending lives. Hassan Kostina The commander of the 2nd Resig Squadron in Kaduna was not harmed during the coup. Shortly before the coup, Castina bumped into Nzogu. Nzogu exchanged pleasantly with Castina and inquired about Castina's children and family. Some have speculated that the conversation between the two men may have saved Castina's life, as Nzogu's familiarity with Castina's personal life may have led to him to exclude Castina from his calculations out of empathy. Whether that is true or not, when the two men first met again shortly after the coup, Nzogu directly asked Castina, are you with us or against us? Seeing that Nzogu was holding a gun, Castina widely replied, you know I am with you. Nzogu used the strategy more than once in the days following the coup as a means of testing the loyalty of other officers. Lagos the Lagos branch of the coup was led by Major Emmanuel Lagos, who held the Commonwealth high jumping record. The key officers assisting Ifajuna in Lagos were Majors Wale Ademoyega, Don Okafo, Chris Anuforo, and Humphrey. Chukuka. At around 2 a.m., Ifajuna and some lieutenants left the 2nd Brigade headquarters and made their way to Prime Minister Abubakar Tafabalewa's residence. They overpowered but did not kill the police officer standing guard there, and Ifajuna kicked down the door of the Prime Minister's bedroom before leading him out at gunpoint. It appears that while the arrest of the Prime Minister was part of the plot, his mother may not have been, and Ifajuna and some of his co-conspirators may have exceeded their orders in killing him. In the aftermath of the coup, Nzogu rattled off a list of names that were on the Major's hit list. He mentioned the unusual, unsurprising suspects such as Belo, Azekiwe, and Akintola. Balewa's name was conspicuously absent. Balewa was not killed until it was clear that the coup was doomed to fail. Balewa asked for and was given time to say his prayers before he was shot by Major Ifa Juna. It was clear that not all arrested persons were to be killed. Some politicians such as Sir Kashim Ibrahim and Michael Obara were arrested but released unharmed. Many of the army's senior officers were attending a party in honor of the Lagos based 1st Brigade's commander, Brigadier Maimalali. Some of the officers attending that party, including Maimalali himself, were to meet the Grim Reaper less than 24 hours after that party. Ifajuna's murder of its commanding officer, Maimalari, was probably the single greatest act of treachery on the night of the coup. In the absence of the vibrant and instant news media of today, an information chassism existed as the government for the fear of increasing tension in the country made little or no comment about the events of January. 
Thus rumors and conspiracy theories about victims were about and miraculous manner of dead survivor tribe. A riot almost broke out when an attempt was made to replace Brigadier Mai Morales commanding officer's nameplate at the second brigade headquarters in Lagos. Mai Morales was widely regarded as an excellent soldier that was headed for the top. His toughness was much that many northern NCOs refused to accept his death and instead believed that Mai Morales had met a miraculous escape from the January Majors and was still alive. These had a tiny semblance of truth. Maimon Larry managed to escape from the first attempt to arrest him by Major Don Okafo by jumping over a wall behind his house. But as he was escaping on foot, he came across the car of his brigade major. Emmanuel Efajuna. Maimarali recognized Efajuna, who was Maimarali's brigade major, and did not realize that Efajuna was part of the couplet. Erroneously believing that Efajuna could be trusted, Maimarali waved down the car and was promptly shot dead by Efajuna. Maimalari's mother was a great loss to the northern soldiers who respected him and to Nigeria as a whole. So famed was Maimalari's toughness that the northern soldiers who murdered Major General Irunsi and Lieutenant Colonel Fajui six months later in a revenge coup actually interrogated the two men and demanded that they disclose the whereabouts of Brigadier Maimalari, whom they believed was still alive. The commanding officer of a Badon based 4th Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Abogo Lagema, was a guest at the Ikoyi Hotel on the night of the coup. Ifajuna arrived at the hotel and forced the desk clerk at gunpoint to inform Lagema that he had a phone call. When Lagema emerged from his room to take the bogus phone call, call Major. Ifajuna and a subaltern emerged from their hiding place in the corridor and shot Lagema dead. Other officers who were considered as pro government or who could prevent the coup were also killed. The Army's GOC Major General Irunsi was tipped off about the coup by a telephone call from Army's Adjutant General. Lieutenant Colonel James Palm. Shortly after ending the telephone call with Iron C. Palm was abducted from his house and shot dead by Major Chris Anufuro. Palm was the second son of the Chief of Joss and was widely liked within the army and regarded as a very capable officer. He was also a father of six. The Major's decision to kill him mortified his colleagues. Anufuru was most hasty in the use of his firearm on the night of January 15. He personally shot dead Lieutenant Colonel Palm and Unewe, Colonel Kool Mohammed and the Finance Minister Chief Festus Okotiebo. Okotiebo was widely disliked during the First Republic for his corruption and the former British colonial officer Sir James Robertson once referred to him as a cheerful rogue and a byword for making money on the side. Okotiebo's arrest was particularly aggressive and eyewitness said that the soldiers who arrested him tossed him into the army land rover like a sack. He was shot dead by Major Anufuru despite pleading for his life. Balewa, Ko Mohammed, and Okotiebu were initially kidnapped but killed later when it became clear that the coup was not going to succeed. The coup caught many of the army's high command by surprise as many of them were away from their posts. 
Lieutenant Colonel Francis Fajui was on leave and the command of the Lagos Battalion was in the process of being transferred from Lieutenant Colonel Hilary Njoku to Lieutenant Colonel Kowan, who was returning from a course overseas. In Ibadan, the Premier of the Western Region, Chief Samuel Akintola, had been forewarned that soldiers were coming to get him. Akintola had had rumors of the coup and had traveled to Kaduna to warn the Premier of the Northern Region, Amadou Bello. Frustrated that his warnings failed to elicit the required degree of urgency from Bello, Akintola returned to Ibadan and armed himself with a rifle. His deputy, Chief Fani Kaode, was first arrested by the Kupis. After this arrest, Kayode's wife informed Akintola of what had happened. Shortly afterwards, a detachment of soldiers led by Captain Emmanuel Mwobosi arrived at Akintola's residence. Upon sighting the soldiers, Akintola opened fire, lightly wounding a few of them, including Captain Mwobosi. After bravely fighting for his life and engaging the soldiers in a gunfight, Akintola was shot dead by Mwobosi and his men. The role of Northern soldiers. Not many realize that several officers of the Northern origin took part in Nigeria's first military coup. The Igbo coup tag attached to the Major's assault ignores the fact that scores of Northern officers took part in the Lagos operations and even assisted in Zogu when he stormed the residence of Northern Region's Premier, Amado Bello. Nzogu later described the detachment of troops accompanying him to Bello's house as a truly Nigerian gathering. Check New Nigerian newspaper, 18th January 1966. Nzogu pointed out that the Northern soldiers accompanying him had the chance to drop out. More than that, they had bullets. They had been issued with bullets, but I was unarmed. If they disagreed, they could have shot me. Most of other ranks were Northerners, but they followed. Among the prominent Northern soldiers that helped Nzogu to overthrow the Northern region's government was John Atom Pera. Pera later became the military governor of Benue State. Many of the soldiers that accompanied Major Ifa Jonas when he abducted the Prime Minister Tafabalewa were also Northerners. The only Igbo to die. The only Igbo to die. Many claim that the January 15, 1966 coup was a gigantic Igbo plot to transfer control of the federal government from Northerners to Igbos. However, one stumbling block in this argument was the Majors killed an Igbo officer during the coup. The proponents of the Igbo coup argument have tried to rationalize the murder of Lieutenant Colonel Ato Unewe by arguing that he was not initially a target of the Majors, but was only killed because he refused to surrender the keys of the armory. This argument displays an ignorance of military postings and procedure. At the time of the January coup, Unebe was the quartermaster general of the Nigerian army at army headquarters in Lagos. Not being in command of a combat unit, he had no access to any armory keys. As soldiers, the majors would have known this. Also, the fact that Unebe was shot proves that the Majors were already armed when they got to him. While kill him to get access to weapons they already had. Additionally, the mutineers in other units outside Lagos managed to get their hands on weapon without resorting to killing the respective quartermasters of their various units. What is more probable is that Unebe was killed because he was known to be close to the Brigadier Maima Lowry. Thus, the Majors probably figured Unebe had to be silenced in order to prevent him from raising the alarm. 
Aaron C. The major's failure to arrest or kill the general officer GOC, the Nigerian Army Major General Johnson Aguironsi, has led some to believe that he was part of or was at the very least tipped off about the coup plot. Ironsi and other senior officers had in the weeks leading up to the coup become concerned by the possibility of a junior officer's coup. These concerns were passed on to the Prime Minister who either did not take them seriously or chose not to act in response. Depending on whose story one's believe, Ironsi was either one in on the plot and an ally of the majors, two was on the major's hit list but managed to escape due to being tipped off by Igbo participants within the coup circle. The truth may lie within Nzogo's famous Africa and the World interview with Dennis Ejindo. Nzogo's comment in that interview are instructive. Nzogo said of the coup plot, We got some but not all. General Ironsi was to have been shot but we were not ruthless enough. As a result, he and other compromisers were able to supplant us. Check the Daily Telegraph, 22nd January 1966. If Ironsi was part of the coup plot, why would the majors plan to kill him? Ironsi's survival in January owed more to good fortune than to him being private to the coup plot as well as the major's tactical mistake in arresting or killing other senior officers before the got hold of Aaron C. As the GOC he was tipped off that in the early stages of the coup and was informed something that unusual was occurring via telephone call from Lieutenant Colonel James Pan. The commotion caused by the murders of the officers alerted Aaron C. to the coup and he was able to rally troops who had been put down the major's coup. Aaron C. actually came across some junior officers that were involved in the coup. It is possible that some of these young officers lost their nerve when confronted by the intimidating presence of their GOC. When he encountered a checkpoint manned by some of the mutineers, Aaron C. simply stepped out of his vehicle and wrote, Get out of my way, an order which was promptly obeyed before continuing his journey. After the coup was suppressed, Aaron C. met with surviving members of the federal cabinet. Even northern ministers present at the meeting considered that Aaron C. was genuinely upset by and wept about the death of his military colleagues. The Aftermath Major General Aaron C. rallied the bulk of the army and managed to put down the coup. The coup leaders, except Ifajuna who fled to Ghana, were placed under arrest. Major Nzogu handed over control of the northern region to Aaron C.'s appointed designee Major Hassan Kastina and was escorted by Lieutenant Colonel Comrade Mwawo, an officer whom Nzogu trusted, to Lagos where he surrendered to Major General Aaron C. The surviving members of the federal cabinet handed over the reins of government to Aaron C. who suspended several parts of the constitution, mostly those parts dealing with party politics, banned all political parties and formed a new military government with a supreme military council consisting of the following. Major General Johnson Aguiron C. Position, Supreme Military Commander, Nigerian Armed Forces and Head of State. Brigadier Babafemi Ogundipe, position, Chief of Staff, Nigerian Defense Forces. Commodore Joseph Way, position, Commanding Officer, Nigerian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowan, position, Chief of Staff, Army. Lieutenant Colonel George Kurubo, position, Commanding Officer, Nigerian Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Chukwemeka Ojuku, position Military Governor, Eastern Region. Lieutenant Colonel Hassan Usman Kastina, position Military Governor, Northern Region. Lieutenant Colonel David Ejo, position 
Military Governor, Midwestern Region. Lieutenant Colonel Francis Fajui, Position, Military Governor, Western Region. After the January 1966 coup, a succession of military governments led Nigeria for 13 years until a military regime headed by General Orusegun Obasanjo restored the country to a civilian democratic rule in 1979. The army returned to power again in 1984 and did not leave until 1999. The major scoop proved to be the catalyst for several military regimes, each one progressively more authoritarian than the one that preceded it. Most of the January majors are not alive today to tell their stories. Of the conspirators, Major Ademoyega and Captain Bouillet have written books on the coup. The following table shows the fate of the key participants. The conspirators, Major Emmanuel Ifajuna. His position before the coup was Brigade Major, 1st Brigade Lagos. Then his fate afterwards was executed during the Nigerian Civil War after planning a rebellion against Lieutenant Colonel Ojuku. Major Patrick Chukuma Kaduna Nzogo. Position before the coup, he was a chief instructor, Nigerian Military Training College. Then his fate afterwards. He was killed in the early days of the Nigerian Civil War while fighting for Biafra. Major Tim Onwatwebu. Position before the coup, he was the instructor, Nigerian Military Training College, Kaduna. His fate. He was killed in the days following the Nigerian Civil War. Major Don Okafo, his position before the coup, he was a co-federal guard. His fate afterwards, he was abducted from Abiyokuta prison where he was detained for his part in the coup by Northern soldiers in July 1966 and killed. Several accounts say he was buried alive. Major Chris Anuforo, Position before the coup, he was a reconnaissance squadron. His fate, he was abducted from Benin prison where he was detained for his part in the coup by Northern soldiers in August 1966, tortured and killed. Major Humphrey Chukuka, his position before the coup was an infantry. His fate unknown. Major Adewale Ademoyega, position before the coup, he was an infantry. He's probably alive, still alive. Captain Emmanuel Mwobosi, position before the coup, he was in the artillery. Probably he's still alive now. Captain Ben Boulier, position before the coup, he was in the army engineers. Probably he's still alive today. That's his fit. Captain Oji, position before the coup, he was in the infantry. His fit, he was killed in February 1968 during the Nigerian Civil War. This article was written by Max Sielun. Sources Gamjikom, Wikipedia Org, Take Me to Niger.com. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our channel Ibo Area TV for more updates. God bless you.